So I'd love to talk to you. We've been talking a lot about what you don't believe in, Cal- which is Calvinism. I'd love to talk with you about what you do believe because yeah. I think you have a lot of really good work on provisionism, uh, free will, all those things. You have a Soteriology 101 is just a great resource. I definitely haven't taken full advantage of it yet. So I'd love for you to just explain a little bit about what is provisionism, what are kind of like the basic tenets of your provisionist beliefs? Well, you'll notice there, I shared a screen with you at the bottom under under your thing, Zach, and you can probably oh, share that with your audience. <laughs> um, but yeah. the, the, I use kind of the same, and one of the things that's made Tulip so popular is that they have a really cool acrostic, you know, Tulip. Um, that, that, that theology is really easy to remember because they've got a way, you know, a mnemonic device to remember these are the main doctrines of what they believe. Well, I, I kind of did the same thing with the word provide. Uh, and this just kind of lays out what we would say as a positive uh, perspective, and that is people sin. In other words, we believe in depravity. People are sinners. Um, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and that separates us from fellowship with God. That's what I think the Bible means by being called spiritually dead. They're talking about being separated due to rebellion, like the prodigal son was in the far country, and therefore he was called lost, but he was found, he was dead, but now he's alive. And so that's what we think uh, the deadness is referring to is separation. I don't think it means a uh, complete moral inability to respond to God's life-giving truth, but I do think it does mean that we are separated in under condemnation. We're under wrath apart from our fellowship and our uh, reconciliation through Christ. Uh, second, I would say responsible. And what I mean by responsible is the ability to respond. In other words, just because you're lost doesn't mean you can't respond to God's life giving truth. And so even people who are lost can respond to a God who's actively seeking to save the lost. And so uh, even lost people are able to respond to God. You're not responding just to nothing like you're on some island somewhere, but you're responding to the gracious appeals sent by the Holy Spirit um, through the gospel and through other very many other means. God uses all kinds of means to make himself known. But we are responsible. All people are responsible to the things of God. And you can see there, there's lists of verses that support each one of these things, just like they have within the TULIP systematic. Uh, the O stands for open door. Um, in other words, the door or the gate, as the Bible refers to it, is, is open to anyone, for anyone and everyone to enter by faith. Whosoever will may come to his open arms. Uh, he, he holds out his arms to all people, as it says in Romans uh, 10, 21, when he says he holds out his hands to this disobedient, obstinate people. He longs to gather them like a mother hen gathering her chicks under her wings, um, that he, he desires that all men be saved. He doesn't, he doesn't delight in the perishing of anyone, as Ezekiel 18 says, but he wants all to repent, repent and live, he says. And so the door is open for anyone to be saved. And that's a really central point of provisionism is that God desires, genuinely desires, and provides salvation for every man, woman, boy, and girl. Um, and, and there's therefore nobody who ends up in hell who can say, well, I'm here because God didn't love me. I'm here because God didn't provide for me. I'm here because God didn't grant me the, the grace or the faith that I needed in order to be saved. Um, nobody can say that because God's provision has been uh, supplied for every single person. Um, we believe in the vicarious atonement. Uh, in other words, um, God has provided a way for anyone to be saved by Christ's blood. Christ didn't die just for the elect, like the L on uh, Tulip suggests, but instead he provides a vicarious atonement for every single person. And therefore those who perish, perish because they refuse the provision of his atonement. And we would say it's much like John chapter three, when he refers to the serpent that was lifted up on the pole. Well, that's that's a, a a a a means of atonement that's provided for the whole, but it only benefits those who look to the serpent for healing. Because in those days, if you remember the story, the the there were a lot of the Israelites in the wilderness who were bitten, being bit by snakes and dying because of the venom. Well, the serpent lifted up on the pole, which is still where we hit, get our signal for the the pharmacy. The logo for the pharmacy is the serpent wrapped around a pole because of that that story. Um, and, and so anyone who looked to that provision, as Christ said, just as those look to the serpent on the pole, whoever looks to me will be healed. Well, he's a provision made for all people, but only those who look to him in faith are actually going to receive the benefit of that, uh, provision of that, uh, vicarious atonement. The I stands for illuminating grace instead of irresistible grace, like the Calvinist would say, 
we believe grace is illuminating, meaning it's a light that's uh, come to enlighten all men, as John 1, 9 says, um, that, the, that the scripture is made known to all people, that the truth is made known to all people, that sufficient light is made known to all people, as we see in Romans 1 and 2. And this grace is an illuminating grace, which makes the truth of who God is abundantly clear to all people, so that all may uh, know the truth and accept the truth or suppress the truth. And they're responsible for which one they do. Um, no one, again, dies or suffers or perishes for a lack of truth or a lack of provision. Um, D stands for destroyed, which is uh, uh, talking about what Scripture teaches with regard to um, those who are uh, those who perish or those who resist the truth or reject the truth, as um, as as Paul points out in Second Thessalonians two ten. Um, so you're destroyed ultimately for your what you do with the Word of God. If you continue to suppress the truth and unbelief, then you will be destroyed. Um, and then eternal security. Um, this is one of the, the the things that seem very similar to what the Calvinistic system says with the guard with uh, the P, the perseverance of the saints. But eternal security for uh, the provisionist or the Southern Baptist traditionalist is really about all about what predestination is. Is that God is predestined for true believers, for those who are put their faith in Christ. He is predestined. What will happen to them? What will happen to those who step into a relationship with? the Father through the Son. Well, they'll be made holy and blameless because that's what we're predestined to according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, and will be conformed into the image of His Son as uh, Romans 8, uh, 29 and 30 says. And so we're, we're, we, we believe in predestination. We don't believe that God predestines certain lost individuals to believe so as to be effectually saved, but we do believe that God is predestined and the word predestination just simply means the destination has been set beforehand. And we believe that the destination for all believers has been set beforehand. We will be justified. We will be sanctified. We will be glorified, brought up to heaven into the place that he's prepared for us. That's what predestination is all about. The destination has been set beforehand. And one, one of the things I use as a good illustration for that, Zach, um, when I'm, especially when I'm talking to students, is, is like an airplane, that an airplane is destined, the destination has been set beforehand. It's destined to fly, let's say, from Dallas to Chicago tomorrow at noon. Well, the destination is set. That is predestination right there. But the airline doesn't decide who gets on the plane and who doesn't. The airline says, whosoever will may come. And anyone can enter into that plane. But once you get into the plane, it's sealed and the destination has been set. You're going from this location to that location because the airline has made that determination beforehand. And it's your responsibility as to whether you get on the plane or whether you get into Christ through faith, or whether you reject him. And so that's our doctrine of predestination, and that's where really eternal security comes from. We're secure in him. Uh, we're not secure in ourselves. We're not secure in our, we're not saving ourselves here. It is, it is he, he is the one who secures us, um, but we are responsible for what we do with the truth that he has brought to us. So hopefully that helps.